And there she is. Hi. Hello, Professor Dr. Karen Nelson Field. Hi, guys. How are you? How are you? Because we do know it's late in Adelaide. It's very late in Adelaide, but uh, I'm excited to be here. Thank you for having me. All right. So what time is now there? Uh, just passing midnight. Oh, <laughs> just my midnight, God. So roughly. let's <laughs> hurry up and let me introduce you to our viewers. So she is the founder and CEO of the audience measurement company Amplified Intelligence and also serves as professor uh, of media innovation at the University of Adelaide. Um, Karen Nelson Field is a globally acclaimed researcher in media science and a regular speaker on the major circuits. So her work has been noted in leading international media news outlets such as the New York Times, uh, Forbes, or The Drum. Um, today she joins us to give insights into her study, Not All Reach is Equal, and to tell us why it all comes down to attention. After her session, we will have a short discussion, and all of you out there viewers, you are invited to ask your questions. So, um, Karen, the stage is yours. Thank you. I will share my screen. Yes, perfect. You can see? Fantastic. Yes, we Hang do see second. and we do listen. Uh, just let me... Right, are we good? All right. Yes, that's perfect. We Thanks, see everything. Guys. Uh, look, so happy to hear all of that in English. It sounds like you've had a jam-packed morning. Um, I can't wait to see the transcript from it, so hopefully I can add some value this afternoon. Um, so, as I mentioned, um, this uh, piece of work is a lot about attention, but it's also about uh, sales uplift, um, but it's largely about understanding um, the differences across platform, particularly in the dark region. So, I was fortunate enough to work with some amazing people from Screenforce over the last 12 months, um, and we did a study essentially through Germany, Switzerland, Austria to consider cross-platform effectiveness. So um, what we know about brand growth is that advertising essentially needs to cut through um, and be noticed at the purchase occasion. And so we measure these really simple but very vital things across media platforms. So we measure ad cut through via attention, which is what was mentioned. And I'll give you a small snippet of what we do in terms of the technology but the sales uplift we do traditional sales or product choice which is um, discrete choice modeling so those are the two um, most vital things to brand growth but um, and simple really when you think about it but super super important conditions that we have to measure across platforms so let's get stuck into it so just a, a, a really quick tech uh, recap. So as they mentioned, we are a um, technology provider who measure audience attention and a number of other things. Um, and in a kind of nutshell, the, the way that we would go to market and collect um, attention, tech, uh, attention uh, data is someone or a panel member would download our app on their phone, for example. Um, we have done PC and we have done uh, tablet before, but this example is, is mobile. So someone will download their app on their phone. We ask them to go to YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, depending on the platforms that we're measuring. They log in as themselves, bearing in mind we are GDPR compliant and we never, ever collect personal information. And we do ask the panel members to opt in twice in case you're concerned. So we, we get them to go to Instagram, they log in as themselves, that means they go to their actual feed. What we can do behind the scenes is we're sort of a li little bit like moat in that we collect device variables at the back end. So we can tell um, sort of when an ad's on screen, how many pixels are on screen, scroll velocity, we can do sound, we can do volume, we can do time on screen, we can also see if someone's orientated their phone horizontally. Um, but also, quite importantly, we can actually um, control the creative. So we can pull creative out of a Facebook feed and replace it with um, creative of choice. And why we do that is when we're looking at cross-platform effectiveness, it's really important to hold the creative constant because creative actually does play quite a role in the level of attention gain. So that's a really important part of the technology. We also then interject the camera, the front-facing camera, and it takes footage um, while you're watching or viewing on the phone or whatever you're doing with your friends. Um, and then at the other end of the view, say it's 15 minutes, we send people to a, a product choice survey at the end. So essentially what we have is we can tell 
what people have viewed, what ads they've seen, how long they've viewed for. We've got footage, which then gets translated back to attention scores, and we have what they've purchase in a virtual store. We can also do that for television, which is what we did for this particular study where the device is actually um, set up in a tripod and the, the back facing camera is facing the couch. So what you should know is that this footage goes through a true AI based or a neural network based um, gaze model, um, which actually allows us to be able to uh, look at whether you're looking directly at the ad. So we call that on eyes, eyes on ad attention or active attention, whether you're looking at the screen around it, which we call passive attention. So it's still paying some attention, but it's not directly eyes on ad or whether you're not paying at all. But the case of television, it's you're sitting in the couch and you're looking directly at the screen that's active. You're sort of talking to your friends or you're kind of looking down at the newspaper or you're looking down at a phone or another device, that's passive. And if you've left the room, that's non-attention. So these are the platforms that we actually considered uh, for this particular study. Um, and again, we did it in three countries. Okay, so let's get to the fun part. So I wanted to pick the top three learnings from our work to show you because as they said, 20 minutes is not a long time. I think there's about five hours of me presenting this work. So you must go back and look through the ScreenForce um, um, website. Um, let's start with this one. Uh, TV generates more sales uplift and attention. What we do know, in fact, let me just recap. So we talked about the fact that someone will go to a, a virtual store and they'll sort of have a look at uh, the shelf and there might be five different types of uh, cola on the shelf and they choose which one they would potentially put into their um, basket. So what we do with that is we translate choice to a thing called STAS. Now, STAS is short-term advertising strength. And basically what it is, is an index of, so we collect a non-viewing baseline, so a control, and then we apply an index with our viewing. And what it means is essentially um, anything above 100 means that an ad has had an impact. For example, if it's 117, it'll be 17%. So it's it's a true uplift, if you like, because it it's controlling for previous purchase behavior in the fact that we are actually applying a market share baseline. So when I talk about sales uplift, this is what I mean. So back to the results, um, what we know is that TV delivers more sales uplift than any other platform on any other device. Um, and that is good news for television. And quite frankly, this is not new news to us. So you should know that we've actually done this study in uh, six countries in total. So there were, uh, three other countries prior to this particular study that we did this work with and the results are consistent across platforms. So again, these are indexes. So what you see is that TV and BVOD punches above its weight relative to its competitors, if you like. Um, and what I'll show you is that actually, so that was the aggregated dark region, but you can see we, we, we put together the Austrian and Switzerland sample so that the sample wasn't too small in terms of its representation. Um, but what we can see is that it's consistent across regions. So it's comparable. And again, as I said, we've done it in Australia, US and UK, and the patterns are the same. The, the numbers are slightly varied, but the actual patterns are the same. Um, and so what we do know is that active attention and stats are significantly related. So we know that um, it's probably no surprises that television actually gets uh, more attention seconds than any other platform. So that's both TV and BVOD. Um, and then, so that's how many attentive seconds um, are paid on average across all different um, creatives, across all different ad lengths, et cetera. And again, we know that the two are related. So having some attention paid is more likely to have um, an ad impact. It's probably a, an obvious thing. So another key finding is that length of time that a TV ad impacts sales far exceeds any other platform. So we just talked about short-term advertising strength. So that's someone's done a viewing, then we ask them to go to a store, they make some choices short-term. What we do know is that um, advertising is not persuasive um, and the longer an ad is in memory, 
is, you know, is, is safer for the brand because it's quite likely that I'll go to the store next weekend or two weekends after, for example. So what we need to understand is what the strength is relative to the different platforms in terms of advertising decay. So just a quick recap, advertising decay is the rate at which advertising erodes over time. So how, how quick does it take to leave the memory uh, before you forget that you even saw it or at least before it was even out of your mind at all? Um, so the good thing about STAS, so that's short-term advertising strength, is that it's built to capture both short-term and up to a month later. So there's plenty of literature that shows this. So what we actually did with this particular um, group, and we've done it once before in Australia, um, is we, we did what we just said. So we get people to do the viewing um, in their own homes. Now, bearing in mind, there's no goggles, there's no headpieces, there's no cables, it's not a lab. So they can do it on the bus, they can do it in the the shower, not really. Um, they can do it, you know, in their home, at school, whatever. Um, so they do the first viewing naturally. We send them to a discrete choice instantaneously after that. But then what happens is 14 days after which we go back to the same people and we ask them to make a choice. They haven't seen it, the viewing again. We just ask them to make a choice. And we do the same thing 14 days later. So in essence, we have three incidences of choice, and then we can model that to understand, you know, rate of decay. So what we do know is that advertising decays as expected, which you know, so it kind of decreases over time, um, but TV stays in, so TV advertising stays in memory for far longer. In fact, um, what we can see here is that the ad retention generates a greater impact at 28 days for TV than either Facebook or YouTube immediately after exposure. So let me explain that again. So day one of YouTube and Facebook is still lower than day 28 of TV impact. So that's, that's enduring, that's amazing. And I have it in um, note form here. So if anyone wants the slides, they can have a look at it, but this sort of describes the pattern in numerical uh, form. So again, length of time that a TV ad impacts far exceeds that of YouTube and Facebook. Uh, in fact, TV takes five times. If you take nothing else from today, attention is greater on TV and TV takes five times longer for the memory to decay to zero than the other platforms. So again, amazing. Um, and the reason why this is, because again, this is what, you know, we, we study, um, is because attention seconds and decay are related. So the more attention paid, the more, the longer the brand will stay in memory. Um, and in fact, um, it's a little bit more complicated than this, but um, on average, every attention second generates about three days in memory. So again, what I'll tell you, um, these results are generalizable. And I think, you know, I get asked a lot, um, particularly given ScreenForce funded this project, you know, how can we, how can you, how can we believe you? You know, if it's funded by a TV organization, how can we believe you? Will the results hold across boundary conditions, across time and across countries? So we haven't done decay before other than Australia, but the original work that I showed you, um, we actually have a slide that shows that all the patterns are the same across all countries. So when patterns are consistent is when you know that there's a generalizable result, which you know then it's meaningful. So the third um, uh, key finding that I wanna, wanna share with you, um, and this is probably again, no surprise, um, but I've got a couple of little surprises in there, um, is that TV ads um, are up to three times longer in view. Okay, so, um, what we know is that um, time playing varies significantly across platform. Now, time playing is the proxy for attention in most cases on the digital forms. So when, and we collect that, as I said, so we have the code that sits behind the platform to understand how long an ad is in view. And we're super fair to the platforms in that we look at time playing counted from when it hits the MRC standard. So when it's 50% pixels, in view. Um, and what we know, even with that high boundary, 
that TV ads are four and a half times longer in view than the competitors. So there are the number of seconds there. So again, time playing is counted from the moment the ad hits 50% pixel standard. Obviously, you know that, that TV don't have a viewability issue in that sense and that uh, TV pixels are, or ad pixels on TV are 100%, 100% of the time. So again, um, TV gets the longest time in view. Um, but I will say, this is what I wanted to surprise you with. Um, some more recent research shows that even when an ad is viewable online, it's typically only looked at for half its time in view. So what this means is that, um, you know, if, if your media is planned against time in view on any platform, so this is not, this is not a Facebook, YouTube issue. This is a, an online platform issue. Um, this actually is quite distressing because it can quite frankly mean that you're paying for half of what you're getting in terms of your opportunity to see. So this is why we say that there's a classic problem with our OTS system and that an opportunity to see really tells us nothing of whether someone's actually seeing the ad, let alone you know the pixel issue and the viewability issue. So we say that time in view can equally mean viewer distraction because it it's 50%, so it's right in the middle, not a chance. Um, and no platform is immune. Um, so you can even see that there is um, a, a, a smaller proportion because, you know, obviously when we're watching TV, let's be fair, you know, there is a moment where you might want to go to the bathroom during the ads or you've got, and we, we look at active, right? So this is how many, the proportion of active seconds relative to the time playing. Um, but the reality is a 60% distraction rate offer a higher time playing is significantly better than um, off, of a, off of a small base. So putting it another way, let's look at the Instagram example, a high proportion like 89% off a very low base is very much under performance. We'll put another way. 89% of three seconds is still less than three seconds. So 35% of 18 is significantly greater. So, so there's all these little nuances across the platforms. But I think the, the key point here is that, that time playing in a, in a digital forum doesn't really represent the actual reality. Um, so just to summarise quickly... Um, what we know is that TV generates more attention and sales uplift, and we know that attention is directly related to sales uplift. The length of time that a TV ad impacts sales far exceeds any other platform. That's super important because that's about longer-term memory versus just short-term memory. Um, and TV ads are up to three times longer in view. So again, I must reiterate that these are not once of findings. These results are generalizable and I can show you the whole deck if you're interested in having a look at the, the greater patterns. So what we know um, as a result of this is that the power of TV is definitely enduring um, and the strength of TV in this sample was found to be stable over many sets of data and what we call many um, boundary conditions. So yeah, very meaningful results. And this is why we think that to not all reach is equal. So thank you very much. Well, we have to say thank you so <laughs> much. Thank you so much, um, Karen. Wow. Uh, we're, I am definitely, I was, you know, took some pictures, wrote a lot of things down because the, it was so interesting and surprising as well. And by the way, to cut down five hours presentation down to 20 minutes, yeah. I think that's what you mentioned. We have to say thank you from, very much for doing so. And as I see right over here, we do have already a couple of questions. So should we jump right into questions from our viewers? Yep. All right. So let's start with um, Maria. Um, she asks you, in your opinion, what are the key attributes of TV or BVOD advertising that make it so much more effective? Uh, is it the sound duration, production quality of ad itself that makes a difference against Facebook, YouTube formats? Or do you have any insights about the content or the context itself that surrounds the ad? Sure. So what you need to understand, and that's an excellent question, is 
we held the creative constant. So I have no doubt that the quality of the ads on television, you know, there's bigger budgets, I accept that. But we have to be fair to the others. So the same ads were seen across platforms. So in the context of what we do to really isolate the impact of the media platform, creative does not play a role here. Um, but what we can see is that um, high performance, so if we have, there, there are certainly high performing ads, but they perform even better on TV than the same ads do on the other platforms. So it's definitely a media thing that makes TV magical. So we don't test the quality of the production, um, but what we do see and what we do know is that the sound definitely, we, we know that sound has an impact in terms of attention. We also know that um, the degree of ad pixels on screen has an impact on attention. And we also know that coverage. So if you think about the way a TV ad is viewed, it's 100% pixels. So the ad is fully rendered all the time, no ability to scroll. And the ad has no clutter around it. So um, we call coverage, it's like spatial clutter. So if even if an ad is 100% on the screen, but it doesn't cover the whole screen, there's an element of distraction in there. So there's just three small things um, that we know impact um, essentially attention. All right, so we are definitely very happy to have you with us uh, at Globally Acclaimed Research in Media Science. And uh, definitely a lot of people would like to ask you questions. So let's continue with our next one. Uh, coming from Veronica Jill Villafranca. Uh, TV generates more attention and sales uplift, but do you think the differences are due to devices or due to content? Have you analyzed, for example, how YouTube content works on TV or vice versa, BVOD on other devices? Yes. So the device does play a role. Um, and in fact, a BVOD actually does punch above its weight. So one of the questions a few years ago, in fact, Facebook challenged us um, and said, that when we first did this, it was actually before mobile was a big thing for Facebook. So it was, you know, three and a half, four years ago. And they challenged us and said, you know, no one watches Facebook on PC when the mobile group is out. Like, you know, it, it will punch, you know, it will totally kill any other platform. It will do so much better. And the reality is they are correct. So, so mobile devices are held, you know, close to your face. There's fewer distractions. But what we also found is that's the case for every platform. So BVOD absolutely um, even more so uh, does a better job at attention and sales uplift than Facebook on mobile. So we haven't tested it the other way around in fairness. So I um, haven't ever done YouTube on television and that's definitely a big piece of our future. Um, but we definitely see that, you know, when there's fewer distractions and, you know, you've got, you've got a device that's close to your face and, and you're really not sort of concentrating too much on other things, um, it can actually punch uh, up against in terms of attention. All right. Um, let's continue. Ah, by the way, for all other viewers out there, just in case you ask yourself, like, where do I get my questions from? They're from you. So for all others, uh, you can go ahead. Just on the upper right-hand corner on, your, uh, on our platform, you can ask your question. And another question is, uh, it is clear that the research shows significantly, significantly improved effectiveness on TV, but the data suggests that BVOD is even more effective in terms of cut-through and sales uplift. Can you give us some more insights into this area and how you interpret the data? Yeah, I mean, that's kind of an extension of what we were just talking about um, mm. in that mobile devices, you know, there's a lot less clutter between it and you, um, fewer children between it and you. Um, so we have seen a few times now that BVOD sort of draw, draws attention quite closely to the screen. Um, and the other thing with the, the very big difference between BVOD on mobile compared to, say, you know, Facebook on mobile, again, comes back to these pixels. Um, so that's that's what we expected. Um, and, yeah, I think that's probably the answer, that, that the device sort of slows distraction or at least 
to some mm -hmm. degree. Um, but then the platforms, the social platforms, drive more distraction by the nature of the way you can scroll, whereas BVOD, you can't do that. Okay. Uh, so you have mentioned that your findings are consistent across all territories you have studied, like UK, US, Australia does. So how mm -hmm. confident are you that these conclusions are also true in the Nordics? So we've done six countries. So yes. when results hold across boundary conditions, you know there's something in it, right? If I was to see these study in one country, you might question me. Uh, we're quite confident. I mean, what we do see um, is that um, the numbers vary slightly in different countries, but the patterns hold true. So I would be very, very surprised if we find that in another country, the results were completely a different way around. Um, in fact, we're so convinced that um, we actually are only going to probably collect in one other extra country for some extra um, validity, but we're, we're, we're getting to the point where we can predict other countries now. So, so um, classical probabilities um, because of the data that we have. So I think it will hold. All right. Um, so we heard you have built also a planning tool of the back of all the country data uh, you have collected. So can you tell us a little bit about that and what does that mean for quality platforms? It means good things for quality platforms. Um, so it's been an interesting year for everyone. Um, <laughs> but about a year ago, before COVID, I made a decision, um, you know, because research will always be in my blood without a doubt. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, without application, findings don't technically solve problems. So we decided we wanted to play more of an active role in a solution in terms of correcting the impression currency. So, you know, I talk about the fact that, you know, opportunity to see is often meaningless and you know there needs to be a bit of a shake up with impression so we went well you know we've got all this data um, and we were sitting on it from a research perspective so we decided to build a proper SaaS platform that very simply uses the data we have to display what we call comparative attention performance or cap uh, across platforms so we are literally if anyone's interested we have a free beta trial in November um, jump on our website but um the point being is that media planners particularly are jumping up um, and lining up for its use so from a quality perspective we've also had significant amount of platforms who've said can you collect data from our platform because we really believe in the quality of what we deliver for our advertisers and can you put it into the platform so yeah we, we weren't when we're not platform builders what we are is we are data providers but um, i'm hoping that this will help the industry all right just in case of that I'm not repeating myself, there is another question. So do you have an opinion on the effectiveness of more advanced advertising within TV, i.e. addressable TV, where digital measurement uh, can be applied to the TV context? So in terms of addressable, so do I feel, is the question, is addressable better than normal non-targeted yes, television yeah, is that the question? Yeah, yes uh, yeah so it's interesting because when i do these studies i often say because we don't apply targeting because you know when you're doing proper cross-platform effectiveness you have to ensure that you hold everything constant and controlled um, but without a doubt we know that um, there are two triggers to attention one is what they call bottom up so that's creative nuances that's uh, things like loud sound, that's unexpectedness, that's emotion. But there's also this thing called top-down um, triggers. So attention is driven by relevance, right? Um, and so the short answer is, without a doubt, addressable TV will have a greater impact than generic ads on in, in, this, in the same forum. But, you know, the trick with that is the relationship between addressable and reach. So large reaching addressable i'm absolutely a big advocate for all right thank you so so much thanks uh for all of your questions out there and thank you especially for your time professor nelson feel we, have, we wish you now a very good rest because we do know oh, that i think you. the rest of the family is <laughs> sleeping right they are they're all asleep <laughs> okay so we do know what maybe what you're going to do right now. So let us say thank you uh, one more time for staying up so late with us. Thank you.
Thank you for having me. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye. Have a great Bye-bye. Day.